today is going to be slightly different. The aim is to be able to make music, not to play a certain note. So you can just type in certain commands, do a plot, they're a means to an end. What we really want is to have a program to be able to do what it is that we're trying to do. Which is a tricky thing to capture in a video. So this is my attempt. Basically, I wanted to write a program to be able to analyze sports data, English Premier League, football in particular. And you know, I could just go, look, with R, I can do this. Yeah, and you know, you can do it with other languages as well. I mean, that's that wouldn't, to my mind, be a magical, specific wow thing that R can do. I, I did it before with Perl, which is great at that. The size of the problem is pretty small. You know, you're talking about a, a league table with about 20 teams, a couple of numbers. You know, you could have done that 20 years ago. That wouldn't be fancy even then. So why do it? The aim, the reason for doing it, is because that's the power of uh, data manipulation. You know, you, you can have some numbers, some data. In this case, you could look up the table in football and see, you know, how many home and away games, what the goals scored are, goals conceded. Then you might try and estimate, extract and go, OK, this team seems to have a bad defense, but a good attack. Uh, these teams seemed to have high scoring games so you know you can you have the data but you can I'm more interested in what value what does that data tell me so if I just have the basic data which everyone has that doesn't really add value but by probing deeper by doing further analysis you can notice things which most of the other people haven't and that gives you an edge and that's valuable and worth knowing. So, at the same time, I wanted to get the idea of trying to do stuff as opposed to just passively watching. About problem solving rather than being given the solution. All within the confines of a video. So here it is. So with our BBC tidy results data, you know, we managed to download the data from the BBC website and end up with having the games neatly, basically cleaned up. So the first game, Tottenham were at home, West Brom were away. Remember we put the underscore there so that there's no space between West Brom, which makes it easier for the computer to deal with it, to process. So all the teams 
with two parts to, the, to their name, like Man City, West Ham, have the underscore so that it's one word. So we know the home team, the away team, how many goals the home team scored, how many goals the away team scored. We also put in what the result was, since knowing these, knowing that the score was one all, we knew it was a draw. So true for draw, false for home win, away win. Having the data in this format means we can kind of, it makes it easier to ask questions, which we did, I think, last time. You know, we could just look at how many home wins did Tottenham have. All we have to do is select, you know, Tottenham or home is equal to Tottenham and then count how many home wins. So, this, so having the data not neatly packaged like this makes it easier to manipulate, easier to extract useful information from. Now what I want to do next is produce a new table. So this, these kinds of tables are already available. You know, we looked at uh, a website where you can get this kind of information from multiple football leagues. So, you know, this is not um, original, but it's a very useful table and it's nice to be able to do it yourself since you have full control of it. You know that it's right. So, we have on the one hand a variable with all the results. So this is a data frame. I should really have called that BBC tidy results underscore data DF if I was being consistent. Since you know you that way when you come back to it or if somebody else is looking at it, I don't need to say that it's a data frame. The name itself would have that. So that was slop, sloppy on my part. I then created this data frame, which has all the fields that I would like to have in the end. Then I can go through these results and update the table depending on what the results were. So if I, you know, I would set this to all be zero, I was messing around with test and I, I changed that to two along the way. So, if we had the first game, I could go home Tottenham, and I could then update Tottenham home home draw. So, since Tottenham were home, and it was one all and a draw, once with that information, I can update the table. So now I'd go. Okay, Tottenham have had an increased home win to one. I'd increased home goals for to one, home goals against to one. I'd increase West Brom away draw to one, away goals for to one away goals against to one, away points to one. I forgot to mention, yeah, for Tottenham I want to add 
that would have increased home points by one as well. And then that would be that. So that's the impact of the first game. Then I'd move on to the second game. I'd extract all the information from this result and, and update the table accordingly. The nice thing, essentially what I will be creating is a function. And the input will be a range, a collection of results. So once I have that, then I'll not only be able to process all the matches, but I could say look at the last six matches or the last ten matches. So I'll be able to probe around getting the kind of information that I'm interested in the more deeper insight information. So that's where we're going and we'll have that next week. What I want to do now is leave that as an exercise. You should be able to do this yourself and it shouldn't take that long it's not it's not we've already gotten the information from the web which I would have thought is the messiest part and what I'm gonna do is I'll cut and paste the first 10 matches so the so what you see on the page now and put it in the description and I'll put this blank table in the description as well. So now you should be able to, from the file, you know, from the text that I've cut and pasted and put in the description, put that information into a data frame and then write the necessary code to be able to update the table to include the impact of these 10 results. These are cut and paste in the description below the video. So see what you can do. Can you process these results and update the table? We'll have the solution, or a solution, since you can do it many, many ways next week. And we can check to see whether you got the same uh, results. Till next week.